The Red Pill Neo. What is the Matrix? The Red Pill. That is our topic today. The Red Pill. The Red Pill and the Blue Pill. This is slang now. Take the Red Pill. Or to be red-pilled, we can use it as a verb even, is now English American slang. Now, of course, this slang comes from the movie The Matrix. So today, in the Effortless English Show, we will talk about the red pill, the matrix, and the blue pill, and how we use these phrases, this slang, when speaking English. As part of our show today, I will play a short scene, a short part from the movie, The Matrix. And of course, I will be answering your questions from Twitter and Gab.ai. Free your mind from nervousness. Free your mind from shyness. Speak English powerfully. Join my Power English course at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. EffortlessEnglishClub.com. All right, the matrix. The red pill, the blue pill. What does this mean in general? Now, of course, we'll learn what it means from the movie first. So I will play the scene, the part from the movie. I'll teach you the general meaning from the movie, and then the more general meaning now, the slang, and what it means culturally in the United States. All right, let's first listen to this short part from the movie The Matrix. Now, in this scene, famous scene, I'm sure you have seen it, right? Morpheus is telling Neo about The Matrix, and then he offers him, he shows him two pills, a red pill and a blue pill. Here we go. Let's play it. If Neo, like everyone else, you were born into bondage, born into a prison that you cannot smell or taste or touch. A prison for your mind. (sighs) Unfortunately, no one can be told what the Matrix is. You have to see it for yourself. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. And Neo takes the red pill, the truth. Okay, let's talk about this movie scene first. I'll talk about a little of the vocabulary in this scene, the meaning of what he's saying, and then we'll talk about how these phrases now have become slang, more general. They have a more general meaning now. So, he says... Morpheus says, you were born into bondage. Bondage is like slavery. So he's saying, when you were born, you were born a slave. And you are inside a prison. But it's a prison you cannot see. It's a prison for your mind. It's a mental prison. That's what the Matrix is. The Matrix is a mental prison. And then he shows him two pills, a blue pill and a red pill. And he says... Okay, if you take the blue pill, you will stay in the prison. You will stay in the mental prison. You will not wake up. You will not see the truth. You can then believe anything you want. You will continue to believe the lies. Or you can take the red pill. If you take the red pill, then you will wake up. You will see the truth. You will see the mental prison and you will escape it. I mean, just before he takes the pill, he says, remember, all I'm offering you is the truth. So 
he's kind of warning him. He's saying, I, I, the truth, he doesn't say it directly, but he's giving the feeling like maybe the truth is not so wonderful. <laughs> and if, you, if you've seen the movie, it's not. The truth is not wonderful, but it is the truth. So he's saying, I'm just, the red pill will show you the truth. You might not like the truth, but you will see the truth. Okay, so that's the meaning of the movie. That's what it all means in the movie. But this movie was huge, right? This was a big, big, big popular movie everywhere in the world, and especially in the United States. Huge movie in America. And because it was so popular and so different and creative at the time, many of the ideas of this movie came into our popular culture. And you see, this movie is a metaphor, okay? It's science fiction, but it's a metaphor for our world now. That's why this slang is used. Because in many ways, we live in a mental prison ourselves. I mean, that's the message of this movie. We also are living in a mental prison that we don't see. What is that mental prison? It's a, it's a prison of lies. It's a prison of false beliefs. It's a prison created by the schools and the media, mostly. Those two. Schools and media create this mental prison. And they put us in the mental prison when we are very, 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 very young. Right? Like he says, we are born into a mental slavery. I mean, that's the message of this movie. And that's why this movie was so powerful. So now in slang, in general slang... In English, if we say, take the red pill, it means wake up to the truth. See the truth. See the hard and terrible truth. Wake up from the propaganda. Wake up from the brainwashing. Wake up from the schools and the media. That's what it means. And when we talk about the matrix in general English, like slang, we're talking about the mental prison created by schools and media. The lies, the propaganda, the fake news on the big corporate and government news sites. All the lies they teach us in school. That's the matrix. And the blue pill, often you'll see this as an adjective, like describing someone. Oh, he is a blue-pilled man. A blue-pilled man. What is a blue-pilled man? A blue-pilled man is a man who will not wake up, who has not woken up. A blue-pilled man is a man who still believes the lies, a man who trusts the BBC and CNN, for example. A man who believes everything he learned in school. That's a blue-pilled man. He believes the lies still. He's still in the mental prison. He's still asleep. A red-pilled man on the other hand, has woken up. A red-pilled man knows the truth about society, about the lies. Interesting. Very, very interesting. So you're going to see this a lot. You'll see it on the internet a lot, especially red pill and blue pill. People using it in different situations on the internet, talking about the red pill or the blue pill. So that's what it means. Now, you'll see it in different areas of life. One area you'll see it a lot is in an area called the manosphere. The manosphere. Here's another slang word for you. The manosphere. What is the manosphere? You ever heard of that? <laughs> the manosphere means it's, it's a collection of websites. It's websites or people online who talk about men's issues, men's issues. So not for women, not for women, right? So there's a bunch of different ones, different websites written by men for men. And all together, if you talk about all of these websites together, this kind of group of websites, this type of website, it might be blogs, might even be Facebook or Twitter or YouTube, but all together, they are called the manosphere, right? It means the sphere is like a circle, or a ball. So it just means like the, the area of the internet that's just for men, specifically for men. And in the manosphere on these men's websites, 
they use this slang a lot, red pill, blue pill. And in the manosphere, when they talk about the red pill, they talk about waking up to the truth about men and women. Right? Because they're saying in the matrix, the blue pill, in the media, in movies, in television, they're constantly, constantly pushing lies about men and women. Right? They're pushing kind of a feminist idea that men and women are the same, that they're exactly equal, for example. Equal meaning same. So women are just as strong physically as men. You see this in movies and television shows all the time now where some tiny little woman is like, you know, punching and kicking and beating up these huge tough guys. And yeah, it's TV. It's fiction, of course. But it's just, it's all the time now. And it's a lie. It's, an, it's a lie. I'm sorry, but the average woman cannot physically fight and beat the average man. Just can't. Men are stronger physically. They have more muscle generally. Yes, there are weak men. Yes, there are a few very strong women. But talking about in general, men have more testosterone, you know, makes us more aggressive, and we have more muscle. We're not the same. We're not the same. And of course, we're, we're not better and we're not worse. We're just different. That's good. Difference is good. We complement each other, right? Men are strong in some areas, mentally and physically, and women are strong in other areas, mentally and physically. And if we try to be the same, then we're just all weak and unhappy all the time. Women are not good at being men. Men are not good at being women. And so in the manosphere, these websites, they talk about this. So they talk about all these uh, kind of crazy feminist ideas of, of sameness and equality. And also a lot of ideas in, in the media where, you know, it's okay to show men as being, you know, stupid and it's okay to sh say that men are the cause of all problems and are bad and there's something wrong with them and women are somehow, you know, more, more noble and wonderful. Lies, lies. That's the blue pill. So the Manosphere talks about waking up to that so that you wake up and understand what is the true nature of men and women. And a lot of these sites, too, the Manosphere sites, will talk about dating, dating and marriage, relationships, and how, once again, you know, men especially are lied to. These blue-pilled men who believe the media, who believe the schools, they're usually quite unhappy dating women. They don't understand how to date women. They don't understand what women are really attracted to. You know, they think that they're taught by feminists, by schools, by the media – these, these young men, especially, they're taught that being nice is the key to getting women, to getting dates, to attracting women. If you're just a nice guy, they'll love you and, and they'll want you. They'll respect you. And that's just not the truth, not for most women. Sorry. It does not mean women want jerks, you know, mean, terrible guys. No. But niceness is not what usually attracts women. It's, it's not. So it's a lie. And so these poor guys, they're out there trying to be so nice. And yet, you know, the girls may be nice to them, but then they see the girls dating someone else. And they, they're so frustrated and so unhappy because they, they just don't know what to do. They want to date a girl. They're attracted to a girl. They love a girl, but she's not interested. Or maybe she dates him and then she cheats on him, disrespects him, breaks up with him. And then they try again and they just keep trying, trying, trying to be nice. And it's just so miserable and so unhappy for them. I was like that. I believed all those lies. I was blue-pilled for much of my youth. And I did. I suffered the same way until I, I woke up to the red pill and the truth. And young guys, I'll give you the short answer. Women are attracted to confidence. Strength. Confidence is what they are attracted to. You don't have to be mean. No, it doesn't mean meanness. But... They are not attracted to niceness. They are attracted to confidence. The more confident you are, the more strong you are mentally, the better you will, the more you will attract women. It's That's the truth. That's the red pill in the manosphere. Now, this idea of red pill, you'll, you'll see it... Um, You'll see it in other areas as well. You'll see it in general about, about uh, let's say, business or society, careers, jobs. So then once again, you know, economics. So 
the blue pill, the lies, is that, well, you just go to school, get good grades, then you get a job with the company and just do what you're supposed to do, the same thing, each day, do your job, be a good worker, and then you're going to have success. You're going to get lots and lots more money and you'll be treated well. Fortunately, that's not really how it works, <laughs> okay? That's just not the truth of finance and money and careers. You got to do something quite different to achieve a high level of success. And of course, you know in English, English learning, education in general, that what they teach you in school is blue pill. You get the blue pill, the lies in school. What's the blue pill with English? Grammar rules. If you memorize all the grammar rules and memorize all the vocabulary, then you will speak English fluently. You'll be a master of English. And you probably have tried that, and you know that's also the matrix. It's the blue pill. Lies, lies, lies. Does not work. Memorizing hundreds of grammar rules will not help you speak well. So effortless English is really the red pill of English learning. It's a red pill system because I give you the real truth about how to do it. The natural, powerful way to learn English. Effortless English is the red pill. If you want to learn more about the red pill, if you're a guy, now this is not for women. Women will hate these websites. I'm just going to warn you. Women, you won't like it. Okay. <laughs> but men, boys, especially young guys, young guys, I recommend uh, uh, a few websites. Uh, one is called Return of Kings, returnofkings.com. Now, some of the stuff they write is, is kind of very strong. Some of, some of it's kind of rude, even. Not polite. But you know what? It's very red pill. If you're a, a boy and you're and you really are not good at dating, if you're really bad with women, you don't know what to do, and you have a lot of bad experiences, Return of Kings might help you. For everybody, I recommend a book called Gorilla Mindset. Gorilla Mindset. Gorilla Mindset's a, a great book for everybody. It's, it's got a lot of red pill knowledge that will help you succeed in life. And for general news and information, check out Infowars.com. Infowars, I-N-F-O-W-A-R-S, Infowars.com. Information Wars is what it means. Infowars.com. And there's lots and lots and lots of others. Those are just a few that I recommend just uh, to give you some, some hard truths, some hard red pill truths. <laughs> okay. All right, that's the red pill. Let's go to Twitter now. Twitter, it's Twitter time. I'm going to answer your questions on Twitter, 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 Twitter. Okay, this is a very interesting question. I have never had this question before, so it's quite interesting. From Samuel, must be from Colombia. He must be from Colombia, and he, he asked me, <laughs> AJ, Please help. I'd like to become the president of Colombia. See if I can see his picture. How old he is? Young guy. Okay, very young guy. Okay, Samuel wants to become the president of Colombia. Wow. Well, that's a big goal. No small goals for Samuel. So, fantastic. Great. How do you, I, of course, I, I, I can't give advice on exactly how to become the, the president of Colombia. That's a very specific goal that I don't know enough about Colombian politics, of course, to, to give some really specific advice. But let me give this advice in a general way, which is you're, you want to be a high, high, high level leader, right? Doesn't matter if you're young, middle aged, older, doesn't matter, but you decide in your life, I, I want to be a very, very high level leader. So, okay, then, now that is a huge topic, okay? There are books and books and books and books about the topic of leadership. Uh, my VIP program is very much focused on leadership and leadership skills. So, I mean, every month I have new lessons about this topic of leadership and success. So it's a big, big, big topic. There are a lot of skills you need. So it's too much for me to give a complete answer here. So I'm just going to give a very short, simple answer, and then you will need to, you'll need to do a lot more reading. You'll get, need to get a lot more training. But 
I'd say the, the number one thing you need to focus on to be a very high level leader is the skill of persuasion. Persuasion. And that's what leaders do. They persuade. What is persuasion? It just means, it means changing people's thinking and then their actions. But to change someone's actions, first you need to change their thinking and feeling too. In fact, a lot of persuasion is about emotion and feeling. So you got to change their mind first. In other words, the mind is the key. You change people's minds, then they will change their actions. So to, to have influence, to be a big leader, you must learn this skill of persuasion. And, and it is a skill and it's not an easy skill. So it requires, you need many, many, many years of practicing. Now, this is a skill I practice a lot. I have been interested in persuasion for most of my life and the psychology of persuasion and the techniques and skills of persuasion. So my answer to you, anyone, in fact, who wants to be a, a leader, is you got to start reading books about persuasion, the psychology of persuasion, the skills of persuasion. Join my VIP program, too, because I teach about it as well. So Very interesting. Good, good for you. I hope you are president of Columbia someday. Uh, when you become president of Columbia, please invite me to Columbia. I'll come down and visit. Okay, let's take another Twitter question. One more. Ah, well, it's just more of a comment, but I'll I'll read it because, again, it makes me feel good, too. Carol says, Hi, AJ. Thank you so much for your podcasts when feeling tired or pessimistic. Negative. I'd like to listen to you. You're so positive. Well, thank you, Carol. I appreciate it. As I said before, I very much appreciate Positive comments uh, sent to me on Twitter or whatever, wherever, Facebook too, Gab, because it energizes me. It tells me, oh, wow, I'm, I'm helping, and that makes me feel more energetic, feel more positive about doing the show, about doing courses. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Very much appreciated. Okay, that is our show for today. Take the red pill. Wake up to the truth. And... The truth is not um, pretty sometimes. Like, you know, you're waking up to the truth about English learning. You're waking up learning that grammar rules are not the answer. Tests and textbooks are not the answer. You're waking up with the red pill, but that's good news because after you wake up, then you can take actions that are successful. You will speak English powerfully because now you have taken the red pill. You're waking up. Go to EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Join one of my courses at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. See you next time. Bye for now.